Skills development plays an important role in national development, attainment of sustainable development goals, decent work and social advancement towards industrialization. For a decade now, major reforms in the TVET sector have been taken towards promotion of access, equity, relevance and quality technical and vocational education and training in the country, ensuring availability of skillful manpower needed to drive the economy towards the attainment of the Vision 2030. It is with this thought that the Danish Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Danida, funded and implemented a project dubbed a Future Proofing of Jobs in Kenya. The project, which was scheduled to kick off in 2021 but only started in 2022 due to the COVID-19 pandemic, was carried out in partnership with key organizations including 3F, the Confederation of Danish Industry, Divers, Danish Trade Union Development Agency, Kenya Water Institute, and the National Industrial Training Authority. Other locally engaged partners included the Kenya Building Construction, Timber and Furniture Industry Employees Union, Kenya Union of Water and Sewerage Workers, Kenya Association of Building and Civil Engineering Contractors, Water Service Providers Association, Women in Real Estate, Central Organization of Trade Unions, and Builder. In the TVET uh, Kenya project, uh, what we bring to the table is the Danish model uh, for TVET and apprentices, and that's very much based on dual learning. Uh, so we've learned over the years that it doesn't work uh, if there's too much theory or if there's too much practical. So we found a good balance by which the students and the apprentices, they go forth and back uh, between school and the workplace in their apprenticeship. Uh, that way the output and the quality of the graduates uh, are much uh, higher. Uh, for that to work in our model, it's important for us that both the trade union is an active stakeholder, the employers, and then also the training uh, authority, uh, in this case being NITA in, in Kenya. Uh, because the, the employers also have to be ready to embrace and receive the apprentices when they start at shop floor. The story behind this project has a lot in it, but it starts way back in 2020 when a minister in Denmark thought about the uh, initiation or uh, different ways of supporting employment in Africa based on the experiences of Denmark. And so he set up a committee of experts to look into the different themes on how uh, Denmark experiences can be used in a way to promoting employment in African countries. From the inception, I participated in the project, both at the design level and at the implementation level. We have had a, a very successful program in that it will impact the students especially the artisans, positively. In our previous engagements, we have not had a serious focus on gender and also the green aspects of water. When it comes to the project that we are talking about right now, the Kenya Tibet project, it really came in at the right time where the country is uh, really pushing for the young people to embrace the hands-on skills. Again, in the project, NITA has been uh, the main partner in training. The intention of us now getting into training in this area is just to revamp the skill sets for the building construction sector. And uh, this has given a lifeline to the youth, the Kenyan youth that have taken part in the project. And uh, we have seen great transformation happen. We received young Kenyans with the Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education. Kenya Certificate of Primary Education, some of them who have been trying to practice their skills in the construction sector without formal training. So when they got a chance to be in the project, it has been a real game changer. During the enrollment period, the project ensured it attracted both genders equally for all the trade areas. As one of the project objectives, 
uh, we have been able to do a lot, especially in terms of gender, uh, being the coordinator for gender activities. Actually, we've seen great uh, milestones and uh, there are many things that we have learned, especially when it comes to supporting female students in the male-dominated areas. These are technical courses that are believed to be very hard or are so much involving. And uh, probably one of the major uh, lessons from this uh, project is that uh, we need to consider our female students because they have many challenges as compared to male uh, students. For this project we were involved uh, because of the pillar of decent work that speaks to social dialogue. So we were involved to contribute to the creation of decent, sustainable and inclusive jobs in the construction sector in Kenya through improved social dialogue on skills development. And over time, it's been identified that skills development is a critical issue that touches on the three parties. This is the employers, the workers, and the government. And uh, through this social partnership that we've had, we have been involved in development of uh, in development of national policies surrounding the issue of social uh, surrounding the issue of skills development. We were actively involved in the development of the national skills development policy, which is aligned with the Koto Kenya skills development strategy, which envisions the creation of a globally competitive workforce that is relevant and sustainable for creation of decent work and posterity. So we did an ad on our local radio stations. We had our social media pages very active with the ad for about two weeks. So we started receiving the applications and the number of Kenyans applied. We had over 1,200 and the project was only taking 250. So it was also a really pros process of ensuring that we were picking the best. We ensured that we had female students or female beneficiaries who also got a chance to be part of the process. Uh, through training, we did not lose any because we had fear that some females will come in intimidated that uh, how can be a, be a mason or a plumber or a welder or the courses that we handle because by and large they are considered as male dominated. But I'm glad to report that our 68 female trainees trained through to it and uh, they completed their training. Right now they are all on attachment and doing a good job competing competitively with the, the male counterparts. And um, we found that um, there was a quite a number, a huge uh, mismatch in terms of skills. And these skills um, were um, in terms of masonry, carpentry, tiling, uh, electrical installations, plumbing, and also painting. After a um, sit down with the um, the prayers, that is construction um, companies, they told us what they were lacking and their, their places of work. The applications were made by these students who were willing to join the construction sector and um, they were quite huge. We went to NITA and also to Kerry. We have a sat down. We did short listing of the of the students, where now we were left with 500 and 501 as part two uh, institutions. At the selection, we assumed that Kenyans who had come in were able to foot their bills and be able to, to support themselves in terms of tools of training and uh, the PPEs or what we call personal protective equipment. So this was overlooked at the time of uh, project inception and we did not provide for it. But I really want to thank our partners, especially the 3F. When we brought up the challenge, um, the lead, 3F being the lead, they allowed us to do adjustment in the budget and we managed to buy the training tools for our beneficiaries. That worked very well for us. We also got um, nicely branded dust coats to help them now cover for the PPEs. Initially, the project we were to handle 450 beneficiaries at NITA in building construction trades. But um, we had assumed that we are picking Kenyans who are within Nairobi. 
But when we sent out the advertisement, we got application from all the parts of the country and we had people who could not day school because if one is coming from Meru or from Mombasa or Kisumu, they had to be within the hostel to be able to, to board and train from the hostel based on where they are coming from. So we did not plan for the accommodation budget and the need was very dire. So again, we had to reduce the number of beneficiaries from 450 to 250. So whatever was to go on tuition for the 200 covered for the accommodation. Again, that was a challenge that we had to adjust quickly along the project and uh, we handled it. Training at NITA starts from 8 to 4 p.m. So there's one hour lunch break. And uh, we realized that some of these beneficiaries were very needy and were not even able to afford lunch, even their own fare to the institution. So again, we requested for support to have them given lunch because the boarders are on full board, they have their breakfast, their lunch and then their dinner. So the day scholars again, especially the females, they had a challenge, they were just staying hungry. The project allowed that they could be given lunch and we saw an improvement in enthusiasm and uh, the way they handled the after afternoon classes, which were mostly practicals. Having begun early in 2022, the project was designed to foster decent, sustainable and inclusive jobs in Kenya's construction and water sectors through improved social dialogue on skills development, enhanced technical and vocational education for a demand-driven system, provide a work-based learning culture with active participation from social partners in curriculum development and also highlight the advantages for companies and employees involved in the development process, setting the stage for scaling up the initiative. We were supported strongly by the project in terms of equipment so that the learners learn in an environment where they gain practical skills. We also are very appreciative because the program also funded the learners 100% almost and they really benefited from that funding. Another plus for the project that I can highlight is that the, the, the Danida trainees, when they went home for a break, they were like an ambassadors. They reached very, very many other friends and relatives, spreading the gospel of the, the, the Danida, that they have been sponsored by Danida, they've had the scholarship, they are friends, they, they, are, they, they are happy. So we received a lot of uh, applications online so they are able to link clearly what they have done in class and what uh, practically happens in the field uh, and at the same time uh, they also get mentorship because we have the other 64 uh, skilled employees who also their skills has been upgraded for for us this is uh, a very very important uh, collaboration with our Danish partners, Kenya Water Institute. We never imagined that uh, uh, students uh, to such a magnitude would be absorbed. Javerik Omondi and Belinda Apondi are an example of the beneficiaries who were brought on board for the future proofing of jobs in Kenya project and can attest to its impact. And so far uh, I'm doing my third uh, semester and uh, it's been uh, a very uh, a very good program to me personally I've gained a lot uh, out there we used to do uh, random things but uh, when in class here we can do some things that uh, we never knew existed or uh, now we do things professionally because now we can uh, fix pipes we can uh, do solar we can uh, deal with the heavy materials like uh, this ones you see in front of me here I've been in class for six months in Nita, Nairobi, and now I'm attached at Enmo Steel Motors for three months of attachment. Here we deal with motors. We control everything that runs in this company. That includes motors and all the processes of from scrap to end product of steel. Like this is the control panel whereby when one of these units lights up, it indicates that the furnace is already heated and it's ready to transfer molten steel to the, to the other production area to make the end products in different sizes. 
Indeed, the Future Proofing of Jobs in Kenya project, which is set to conclude in December 2023, has indeed been of great impact, with a number of recommendations to the current ongoing TVET reforms. Active engagement of social partners in skills development and employment discourse in Kenya, restructure engagement of private sector in skills gap analysis across different sectors in the industry, integration of the green transition in the TVET curriculum, addressing of gender imbalance in the TVET institutions from an early stage through proactive initiatives such as ambassador calls and making the institutions gender friendly, adoption of dual learning in the Kenyan TVET system for better skills transfer and enhancing access and creation of employment, establishment of uniform guidelines for internship programs, establishment of partnerships between TVET institutions and social partners, both Federation of Kenyan Employers, WASPA and KOTU, together with trade unions in curriculum and training to create awareness among trainees towards decent work. And uh, going forward, I think some of these are uh, lessons to be carried along. Uh, there is need to continue that kind of a partnership where the TVETs would open up their doors to these trade unions and integrate in their curriculum components on training uh, the learners about the role of trade unions, workers' rights, and also what are emerging issues around decent work conditions. Uh, in a nutshell, I would say <laughs> the project has had great impact because between the two institutes there has been training of 400, around 460 uh, students and trainees, both freshers and those who are doing upskilling. Now I, I think that uh, this project has brought a platform for discussion around uh, Tibet uh, in, in Kenya and it comes with great lessons that can be borrowed by, can be taken for improving the Tibet institutions, but as well as even vocational training uh, colleges can also benefit uh, in a big way from the lessons out of this project. Our achievements or milestones under this program also revolve around policy issues. Uh, I'll highlight the key ones. We held a social dialogue forum to explore skilling opportunities. And this forum brought together the key players in the Kenyan labor market. We had Ministry of Labor uh, present in the social dialogue forum. We had the vocational training institutions. We had uh, the National Industrial Training Authority meter. We had the Kenya Water Institute, Kewi. We had representation from uh, WASPA and uh, CAPSEC. And it was basically to get a feel of what is it that the industry is demanding in terms of the labor that we supply as the workers in the labor market. We hope that again, um, our funders, Danida, we have done the pilot very well, so we look forward to having now um, a bigger rollout of the project so that we cover the number that we had initially in mind. We were looking at 450 um, at the pilot, but um, we only managed uh, 251. So we appeal to Danida to review the pilot report that we'll work on together with the key project partners and have now um, sustainability probably in another phase of the project. In recognizing the fast-changing labor market demand in the water and construction sector, the project has keenly engaged 28 companies in both sectors in exploring opportunities for workers to acquire new skills and update existing skills. Adopting to this model, the companies now understand the importance of upskilling and promoting decent employment where workers obtain certification to fit into the quick-changing world of work.